All right, so first, uh, first set of techniques are going to be removing the barricade. I'm going to have the pocket stick in my left hand. I remove the barricade. I deliver my punch. I then move into position, sweeping the arm out of the way. I get my clinch. Notice that I stepped up with my right leg and I'm around the elbow. I deliver the knee strike. After delivering the knee strike, I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to do the Hawaiian choke. This hand slips underneath. I fold my elbow in and as I squeeze, the strangulation happens. In addition to doing the strangulation, I would also deliver a knee to the face. So that would be the first. Go. All right, next in the series is the shoulder lock. So I remove the barricade, deliver my punch, move to the outside, and I'm here. After delivering the knee strike, I slide across his back and I actually come underneath his arm and I'm gonna pull so it bends and I'm gonna move behind him, keeping this close to my body. I then bring this arm across and put it right on his windpipe as I straighten him up. Next in the series is going to be the elbow lock. So I remove the barricade again, deliver the punch, move to the outside, and deliver my knee strike. At this point, this is going to slide down, coming just above his elbow, and then it goes right into my hand. And notice that I'm keeping this close to the body, body part to body mass. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot and kneel with my left leg, and I'm going to spin as I do so. So he's forced to go down with it, or it will break his arm. Now at this point, you see how there's a little gap there. He can bend his arm, and I don't want that to happen. So when I take him down, I have to go from here to there and rotate it. And this goes across his lower back, and now i got his arm secured. Next in the series is going to be the outside wrist lock. So I remove the barricade, and I deliver the strike. As I come underneath and I start to squeeze, he's going to turn his wrist a particular direction. Any of you might turn that way or this way to get away from the pain. Let's assume he turns it to the outside. When he does, I lift my forearm up just a little bit so it comes across his metacarpal bones. I keep this tight, I keep my elbow moving forward, and I take him down for wrist lock. When he hits the ground, I'm gonna rotate it, apply pressure to the wrist, and walk him to his belly. The next one is the finger lock. So as I remove the barricade, I deliver my strike. This time when I squeeze, he rotates his hand the other way. He could even be trying to grab my wrist. I bring my, my forearm up just like I did for the wrist lock, but this time I'm going to bring his palm towards the floor. And when he hits the ground, I have to remove it and then hit him. So on this next portion, this is going to be against the jab, and I'm going to use a windmill motion, and then I can do the entire series that we did before. So if he throws the jab, my windmill motion looks like that, and I deliver my punch. So again, punch comes in. And notice where I'm pulling this. It's not here where it'll slip out. I'm pulling it over here. And then my punch comes over the top. So slowing it down, it looks like this. As I parry, I stab. This hand comes in and I deliver my punch. And then I could move back in to the entire series I did before. Choke, shoulder lock, elbow lock, wrist lock, finger lock. Next, we're gonna remove the barricade with the rear arm. So the, the pocket stick will be in my back hand. So on this one, it's a stabbing motion. I'm going to move in and stab. As I do, I'm hitting with the form. Notice that when I bring this out, the tip of the pocket stick is facing up. So again, I move forward and I hit. I then slip this underneath and goes right above the elbow, and then I deliver my knee strike. And then we go through the entire series we did before. So after the knee strike, I switch the hand, and I come in and I do my choke again. And of course, the knee to the face. Okay, I remove the barricade. Stepping in, delivering my knee strike, and now I can do the shoulder lock. I prefer to leave the stick there. It helps to keep it trapped. And I come over here with my other hand and I got my shoulder lock. I can also do the elbow lock from there. As I move in, I remove, I hit, move into position, hit him on the knee. This comes just above the elbow, and as I drop, he's got no choice but to go with it or his arm breaks. In this occasion, I don't have to turn the stick over because it's already in the right position. There's no gap. Here's where it changes up a little bit. So I remove the barricade. Bang, I hit. Now, I'm gonna come over and grab, and this one is nothing but a break. It's not a submission hold. As I turn, his wrist locks, and I'm throwing an elbow strike. As I rotate, show it from this side, it looks like this. So I move in, I remove, bang, I hit, and I come over here and grab. As I rotate, it locks his wrist, and he has to go with it, or it's gonna break. But if I do it fast, it's gonna break anyway. I'll edit the video later. Right. This next one's called the dive bomber. So he's gonna to try to grab my, my arm. So as I come over here and I start to do this, he rotates and grabs my wrist. He's effectively taking himself out of the wrist lock, but I come over here and I drop down 
and then I'm going to sink and come into him. And it's going to break those fingers this way, and we call that one the dive bomb. It's going to be the right straight. Ready? So now, the pocket six in my left hand again, he's going to throw the right straight. When he throws the right straight, I'm going to redirect and I'm going to hit, and then I hold right into my clinch. And then from this position, I go through the entire series again. I switch the hand and I come in for the choke, beat him in the face. Next in the series, with the pocket stick in the left hand, right straight, move in and I hit, hit him with a knee. Now I go to the shoulder lock. I come over here with my right hand as I pull, locking his shoulder. I'm just going to leave the pocket stick right there so it keeps it trapped. And I come over here and grab. Next one is going to be the elbow lock. So he punches, I move to the outside, I hit, move in for my knee. My pocket stick is right above his elbow. I pivot and I kneel down as before. Remember on this one, and he comes across the lower back, and then I'm locking his elbow right here. Next, in this series, he throws the right straight. I'm moving over here, and I'm hitting. Now I do the wrist lock again, or wrist break. So on the last one, he throws the right straight. I'm coming here, delivering a strike. He turned and grabbed. Okay, so I'm going to reach over the top, and then I sink down, and I come up and into him, breaking his metacarpals and his fingers at the same time. Now we're going to move into striking with the pocket stick. So as he throws the jab, my first in the series is to parry and stab. So as he throws the punch, I'm going here. Bang! And I'm hitting the outside of his arm. Another way we can do that is this motion here, like an inner block. So as he throws the punch, I'm going here and hitting the outside of his arm. Okay, the next one is called a gun tick. Gun tick stands for scissor motion. So as he fires the jab, I'm parrying and I'm hitting on the inside of his arm. Usually we follow with a spear to the throat right after the jump. On the next one, he's going to fire a right straight since he's over here. Pocket stick still on the left hand. As he fires the right straight, I parry and I hit the inside. Notice that I'm stepping at an angle. I don't want to stand right in front of him and end up with a, a left to the face. I'm stepping at an angle, so when he comes in, I'm hitting the inside of his arm. Okay? All right, so on this next series, we're going to assume that the, uh, the opponent grabs a hold of our wrist. So it's the same side grab. I wrap right across his metacarpal bones, I reach up and grab, and then I'm going to point his palm towards the floor as I roll my forearm over the top, once again breaking his fingers. If he grabs in a cross wrist grab, this time I put the pocket stick across his thumb, and as I do the same thing, this time I break his thumb. Okay, on the next one, he grabs same side low, I'm going to trap the hand, we're going to do the Z-lock, but in this occasion, we have to use the thumb. So I trap the hand, I move to the outside, I got his hand secured, and as I bring it down, it snaps. Inside, I don't necessarily have to use the thumb over here. I step, I move to the outside, and then I do the lock again, bringing him down. All right, grappling technique number one. He's got his hand on my chest. I'm gonna take the pocket stick, put it against the metacarpals, lower towards the wrist, right around an ear, and as I grab with the other end, I'm gonna step back and squeeze that into his hand. Usually what we do right after that, is after I'm driving that in, I'll grab his head and this will drive into his throat. Okay. Next technique is going to be a two-handed choke. I'm going to spear him. So if the pocket stick is in my right hand, that's going to go against his windpipe. And as I step forward, that jams into his throat. Notice that I'm rotating my shoulders as well. So if we show from this side, two-handed choke comes in. Pocket stick goes right against the throat. As I step, I drive it in. There's no way he's holding on. Next one. He's choking. Very similar to the single hand pluck you see in Krav Maga. This comes over the top, and as I turn my body, I'm going to pull with the pocket stick. That would be a palm yield right to the face. So as I'm doing this, I come over the top, boom, and then I move into my clinch. And then from here, we can recycle some of the techniques that we did from before, right? Yeah, this next technique, the empty hand version, this would be from our Kensuguru Jiu-Jitsu system. He comes in with a bear hug, my arms are free. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step to the outside, and as I step to the outside, I'm going to sit into his leg so he rocks back on his heel. So as I sit into his leg and he rocks back on his heel, I'm going to reach down and I'm going to grab and I'm going to pull up. If he doesn't fall, it's going to break. At this point, I can kick, I can turn and break the leg, and exit. Now, same technique done with the pocket stick. So he's grabbing, I move to the outside, and once again, I'm setting into the leg so he rocks back on his heel. This time I stab behind his leg and I grab the pocket stick. And this time as I come up, 
Not only did I take him down, but I also have an ankle lock. And to finalize the ankle lock, I'm gonna bring my left leg over and convince him to turn to his belly. As he turns to his belly, you come around here, cameraman. You see that his Achilles tendon is locked. I can roll that into his 